Hi everyone, how you doing? It's me, Phil Ainsworth here again, welcoming you to my blog. I've got a little report for you today on why you should be like Subway and not like McDonald's. And uh, But don't worry, this is not a lecture on uh, healthy eating or anything. Some of you might know I'm a vegetarian. Don't worry, this is not some kind of uh, veggie Nazi ploy to turn you all into, uh, into, into not meat eaters. Um, I'm not into that at all. I'm one of the veggies that uh, doesn't believe in being a Nazi. I don't mind if other people eat meat, just not my choice. Uh, now, what this is today is this is a report on uh, on marketing and how you can learn some great marketing tips by looking at some of the big players and obviously Subway and McDonald's, two of the biggest brands in the world. And I actually think that Subway are doing a lot better in their marketing than, than McDonald's at the moment, and that's what we're going to be going into in this report. So I hope you like it. Uh, before we get going, by the way, I had a lot of comments about my hair, or as we say in the UK, barnet in the last video. Um, <laughs> glad you like it so much, guys. Gone for a bit of a more of a punk thing for you today. Anyway, guys, let's get cracking on with the report. So first of all, you're probably thinking, huh, well, we're marketers, Phil. What has McDonald's and Subway got to do with marketing? And I think, well, the smart ones amongst you uh, probably not saying uh, quit talking about food before you make us hungry or is this some weird vegetarian thing no it's not we've covered that already the smart ones amongst you are probably thinking the same way as me which is in my life when I've been growing my business I've always looked to successful businesses and successful people that I admire uh, to see if I could crack the code so my logic is is if successful people and successful businesses are successful then they must be doing something right now it's not 100% guaranteed that if you can just follow their methods you will have success but there's got to be something in it. I'm not saying for example um, that if I learn to speak like Donald Trump that I might earn his wealth um, but if I copied some of the strategies that he has used over his life then I might do well. Uh, I'm not saying I'm gonna um, become a billionaire by growing my hair like Richard Branson but if I implement some of his ideas about business, then I might do well. So I'm sure you, you'll see there's um, there's some uh, possibilities there. So out of all the brands in the world right now, McDonald's and Subway probably are two of the most best well-known. They're probably two of the ones that you think of immediately. They're up there in what I call the mega brand category. And uh, let's be honest, right? They probably know a bit about selling stuff. And they probably know a bit about marketing it as well to uh, you and me. The consumer yeah so maybe we can learn some stuff from them seeing as we we are becoming marketers and what do marketers do we we get people to buy stuff so and then we make money so maybe we can learn some stuff from two companies that are probably some of the best at marketing in the entire world so first up let's look at McDonald's business development strategy this is really interesting now a few years back I picked up a book called fast food nation the Dark Side of the All-American Meal by Eric Schlosser. Now, don't worry, I'm not here to try and convert you into some anti-McDonald's, anti-corporate thing. This is not about that at all. I mean, the book is kind of an, an anti-McDonald's uh, uh, book. And you know what? I urge you to read it because it will probably change the way you think about, about certain things aspects of fast food but don't worry that's not what this report is about this report is not about trying to get you to change your mind just um, page 66 of this book if you if you buy it and happen to read it there's a quote and it's up until the 1980s McDonald's was one of the largest purchasers in the world of commercial satellite photography they used it to predict suburban sprawl from outer space and what this means is in the 1960s Ray Kroc who was credited with uh, with developing McDonald's into the success it was he wasn't the guy that founded McDonald's he actually bought the chain off the McDonald's brothers but he was the man credited with turning it into the, the, uh, the success that it is uh, in the 60s he used to fly in planes above major cities to try and spot where the new um, retail parks and the new suburbs were being built and where the new roads were being built to so that he could decide be the first to beat his competitors to get a, a, a new restaurant into the new shopping mall that was about to open or into the new suburb that was just about to being being built and then in the 70s and 80s um, the company decided to do this on, on a grander scale and they started purchasing um, 
millions of dollars worth of commercial satellite photography to spot where new roads are being built and where new shopping malls are being built so they could be the first ones in there pretty smart right you've got to admit that's pretty smart then in the late 80s they went even more high tech and this is really interesting they developed they had developed a computer program called quintillion and this combined satellite imagery gps maps and demographic tables and all sorts of gadgets and gizmos and clever information to automatically pick the best sites for them for new restaurants, they just had to run this program every day, and the program would give them, a, you know, a list of the best possible sites to look into to develop. Then, obviously, they'd make up their own minds, but this would be this program would advise them on where we're going to be the next the next best sites where there was going to be a lot of people, either shopping or living. Um, in 2001, which was uh, the year before the book was published, so I don't have any more recent figures, but in 2001 they spent 1.4 billion in US dollars on marketing. 1.4 billion, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal, I can't get the word right, phenomenal, whatever, you know what I meant, sum of money. And uh, on the topic of child focused marketing, the guy Shostler explains how the McDonald's Corporation actually modeled their marketing tactics on the Walt Disney Company which inspired the creation of these advertising icons, these child-friendly advertising icons such as Ronald McDonald and the Hamburglar and um, the other ones like that purple dinosaur thing, I can't think what it's called, anyway. Uh, marketing executives theorized the shift to market to children would result not only in attracting the children to the restaurant but their parents and their grandparents as well and more importantly the tactic would instill brand loyalty that would persist through adulthood via nostalgic associations to McDonald's. That's actually from the Wikipedia article on Fast Food Nations because I couldn't be bothered to sift through. I, cutting and pasting is more easy than uh, typing it out for a book. So please forgive me. But this is what McDonald's, that they hit on the idea that Disney are really good at uh, connecting with children. So they took one of Disney's, Disney's ideas of having these cartoon characters that kids love and they knew that if they hooked the kids when they were young they'd have them for life because all through our adult lives we associate McDonald's with this happy memories. So you get in the picture, they spend huge amounts of time, money, effort, labour, uh, and that's spelt the British way, by the way, with a U, which is the correct spelling, he yanks. <laughs> labour, that's a joke, I'm not a spelling Nazi. Labour and technology on getting a healthy slice of the 110 billion, 110 billion US dollar annual fast food market pie. And they've got the resources to do it, right? So what does Subway do, seeing as this report compares Subway to McDonald's? Well, I've got no proof of this. I've got no inside information. But it seems to me that Subway's business development strategy is basically two parts. A. Wherever there's a McDonald's, open up a Subway nearby. B. Present their equally low cost an equally quick service option, but market it as a healthier alternative. See, they figured that the people at the Golden Arches probably did their homework and they probably made sure there would be a good customer base of fast food, potential fast food consumers around each Mackey D's before opening up. Um, so they took advantage of that fact and knew there would be a, a, a a, a customer base ready to, to market to. And they took all the plus points of McDonald's business proposition, which is, you know, low cost food with very quick service and um, consistency between different outlets. So if you walk into a McDonald's in um, Japan, you're going to expect a similar menu to the McDonald's in New York or the McDonald's in London. Um, obviously, they, they change it on an international basis to, to, to appeal to different markets, but it's the consistent standard of expecting a, a certain taste to the fries, a certain looks for the burger okay they took the plus points of that thing of having standards and having a low cost food and having quick service food by streamlining the, the food service and delivery process but then here's the really clever part then they presented themselves as better and I, and I put that in inverted commas because I'm not saying Subway is better than McDonald's but I'm saying they present themselves as better because what's the Subway slogan the Subway slogan is two words the Subway slogan is eat fresh and there in that logo is a massive um, middle finger stuck up to McDonald's it's a massive statement eat fresh the, and, and we all know when we read that what does eat fresh mean that what they mean is they're saying we're better for you than McDonald's 
That's basically what they're saying. You want fast food, you're on your lunch break, you're just driving home from car, you driving home in the car from work, you want something quick, we're better for you than McDonald's. That's what they mean when they say eat fresh, that's what they're trying to tell you. I'm not saying they are better for you than McDonald's. I mean, there's a lot of sugar in those sauces, there's a lot of salt as well, but it's a different issue. But e.g., the, the uh, proposition they're presenting to us all is a healthy alternative in a world, and they, they hit the market at the right time because in the last 10, 15 years, people have become increasingly concerned about their diet and their health, and also the impact of their commercial decisions on the globe. Now, I, I'm really not saying that Subway food is any better or healthier than McDonald's, and I'm not saying they're a more nice, caring company. I mean, like any company, they exist to make profit for their shareholders. That's the essence of a, of a, of a publicly of a, of a publicly list, publicly listed company, anyway, corporation. But you have to admit, this is smart marketing. It's copying what your competitors do, only doing it better. Okay, and what's the consequence of this marketing? According to the MSNBC website. Subway had 33,749 restaurants worldwide at the end of last year, according to themselves. McDonald's Corporation had 32,737, according to a regulatory filing. That means that last year, Subway had 1,000 more units across the globe than McDonald's. Now, that by itself doesn't mean a lot, because McDonald's still do, they still trump Subway's at revenue. Um, 24 billion US last year as opposed to Subway's 15 billion so um, you know nearly uh, a, th a third as much again uh, over a third as much again actually 30-40% more but if they've got more restaurants open across the world now and, and they're presenting themselves as a healthy option in a world where more and more people are becoming increasingly concerned about their diet I would say that within 10 years Maybe Subway could have McDonald's trumped, and uh, something that no one would have thought 15, 20 years ago that McDonald's would not be the the, the global leader. And uh, you know, I'm not here to say uh, you probably you might be watching this thinking right now saying yeah, but I love my Big Macs or yeah, whatever. And of course you do. I mean, I'm not saying that lots of people don't enjoy McDonald's food, but I'm making a very simple point, which is that if you go into business and take all the best things that your competitors are doing and put your own spin on it and then present your version as better in some way having all the benefits of the of, of the other stuff but even more benefits see here's a marketing lesson for you you don't need to reinvent the wheel you don't need to come up with some crazy new idea that no one's ever thought of before I hear that too often I hear people say um, oh, I had this great idea and no one's done it well, if, if no one's doing it it's probably because they've already thought of it and already tried it and it failed. There's 7 billion people on this planet. If you thought of an idea, the chances are someone else has already thought it, tested it, tried it and marketed it and it's failed. That's the sad truth, okay? But if other people's stuff is selling well, then there must be things about it that lots of people like. And if you really want to make money, all you have to do is make your own version. And if it shares common plus points with the other stuff, then you'll sell yours as well. And if you present your stuff as similar but better, and if people accept that, and you can take down the big boys, then you can be a subway to your competitors, McDonald's. I hope you like the tip uh, coming soon. Obviously, think about how you could implement and how you could implement. In fact, I'm not going to ask you to think about. It. I'm going to tell you how you could implement this in your business. If right now, if you haven't created your first product yet, and if the reason for that is because you're trying to think of something original to say, something novel, something different. Uh, if you're in the insect marketing niche but you don't feel qualified or you don't feel like you've got enough experience to teach people things that other insect marketers are teaching them, then don't be scared. If you want to do a report on list building, do a report on list building. Take some of the ideas that I've shared with you and, and add your own ones to it. You know, there, you don't need to reinvent the wheel. You, you, to, to create your own products, they don't need to be 100% original. They just need to have your slant on it, your spin on it and you'll find customers that like your thing. Okay, in the way that I hope you like the products that I turn out and the, the content that I deliver to you as well. Coming soon, I've got more marketing tips that I've stolen from the big players just to help you and your businesses. Um, hope you guys like the report. What I'd really, really appreciate it is if you can leave some comments below which would be great, uh, either good or bad, give me tips, let me know what you think of this, and also be really cool as if maybe you could share this on Facebook or Twitter by using some of the buttons down below, or even just post about me, that would be awesome. And hey, maybe you could 
um, if if you if you were sent here, if you received an email from me which sent you to this page, then it wouldn't hurt to forward that email on to some of your friends. You know, I'm I'm not going to hold it against you if you do that. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you very much. This is Phil worth signing off. You uh, signing off. Best of luck in your businesses. Keep growing your lists. Keep growing your businesses, and we will succeed together. Thanks a lot, guys and girls. Bye bye.